few weeks ago, uh, we had uh, uh, an outreach scheduled uh, for Seven Sisters. Uh, it's become a, a bit of a, 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 a point for us now. I mean, it's always been, I believe, but of late, just been heading back there. And, uh, I, you know, we've been there many times before. I've been there myself many times before to do outreach. And one thing I do, not all the time, if I'm going to be real, not all the time, I don't do this. But this time I've, I, 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 I felt specifically just say, God, you know, I don't want to just come here and stand and just give out flies. God, you need to lead me, direct me uh, 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 to people. And I kid you not, I kid you not, I spoke to about, I spoke to six people that day. And every single one of them, it was powerful. Every single one of them, it was not just like some five minutes conversation. We were talking, we were engaging uh, about the things of God. People were just open. It just, it felt so good. It felt, it felt very, it was unique. It was different. And I remember speaking to my wife about it afterwards. She asked me how was outreach uh, that day because she couldn't come. I said, babes, man, I don't know what. There was something different about that day. There was something unique about that day. And I simply said, and I, when, I, when, I, when I think about it now, I didn't tell her that this then, but I, when I think about it now, it, it felt like I was in the right place at the right time. I was exactly where God wanted me to be, in the right place at the right time. Tonight, I want to preach about being in the right place at the right time. Because I don't believe tonight God wants these things to be once a while. I, want, I believe tonight God wants us to be walking in such an anointing tonight that wherever we go, that this is going to be the right place at the right time. And church, when we're in the right place at the right time, we get the right results. Amen. Let's look tonight at Acts chapter 8. 26 to 38. I may jump around. I may not. It just depends. Uh, but we'll see how God uh, uh, leads us. Amen. Acts 8, 26 uh, to 38. The Bible says now, <clears throat> uh, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards uh, the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he rose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia, eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had uh, uh, charge of all her treasury. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was uh, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake his chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. Uh, uh, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before a shearer is silent. So uh, he opened not his mouth in his humiliation his justice was taken away, and uh, who will declare his, uh, uh, declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began uh, at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch says, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe it with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So he, uh, uh, he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now, when he had come out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing hallelujah let's pray father we thank you for this time again in your presence uh, god all you're doing in the lives of the saints of god i so father appreciate all you're doing in the lives of your people i'm praying tonight that you'll be glorified i'm praying tonight god that you would speak to the body of christ father the fine tuning of the spirit of god will take place in our hearts in our minds mighty god use your church help us mighty god we need to be in the right place at the right time especially in these times we're living in lord we give you all the glory we give you all the praise in jesus name and all god's people said amen, amen. 
and amen. I want to look tonight at all the difference in the world, all the difference in the world. If you read the book of Acts, you find out very, very quickly tonight, the Acts, amen, the book of Acts is really, amen, uh, the account of the Acts of the Holy Spirit moving through his people, the church. The Bible tells us that Jesus tells his disciples uh, after he is resurrected to go to Jerusalem, and at Jerusalem, you're going to wait for the promise uh, of the Father. We are told in Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to, to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Here is Jesus, I mean, gathering his men, gathering his people, and he's basically saying, if you're going to be effective for me, you need me. You need the Holy Spirit. If you're going to do what I've put you here to do, if you're going to make impact in the world and see my glory come, you are going to need the Spirit of God. We fast forward to Acts 8, and here is Philip tonight. Philip is in revival in Samaria. God is moving. People are getting saved. The whole, not just a community, I mean, a whole, you can say, a, 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 a large section of a nation is getting saved. They're coming to Jesus. They've been baptized. I mean, they're, they've been filled with the Spirit of God. And at this place of revival, at this place, I mean, where people are giving their lives to Christ, I mean, the Spirit of God comes to Philip and he begins to deal with him because here it is, this man, he's making impact on the masses, but God wants to use Philip to impact the one who can now impact the masses that he's led amen to a road the side of the road you can almost imagine Philip is standing there thinking what am I doing here you know there's nothing happening here in Samaria there's revival in Samaria there's need in Samaria God is moving but I'm standing at the mid at this side of the road and he Bible tells us he's going to leave Samaria he goes to a desert place he meets an Ethiopian uh, eunuch who is on the Candace now let me say this tonight Candace tonight is not a name it is a title. It's almost like Pharaoh or king. Amen. She's a, a queen. Candace literally means queen of the Ethiopians. She's in charge of the treasury. He's in charge of the resources. And he's going to meet this man. This man is going to get saved. This man is going to go back and bring the gospel, amen, to that nation that is part of her. And I want to pause and put, uh, put a footnote tonight. Uh, when you look at the map of Africa, and when you look at that side where Africa, where, uh, of Ethiopia, amen, uh, it's, it's predominantly Muslim. It is a predominantly Muslim side, amen, of Africa, but at that corner stands one nation that you can call Christian, and that is Ethiopia tonight, and I believe it is so because of this man. I believe it is so because Philip stepped aside, allowed the Spirit of God to deal with him, and this man, amen, is able to go back and impact his nation. Now, let me stop and ask a question tonight. Have you ever found yourself <clears throat> at exactly the right place at the right time. Think about it. That you find yourself exactly at the right place at the right time. I'm sure tonight maybe this has happened to you before. That you meet an old friend at a place that you really go. That you go somewhere, you know, I remember going to Ghana and it was the only one time I've been there. I went to go and preach. And of all the places to meet, I met a friend that years ago we used to hang out together. I've not seen him. I mean, for I've told me about the uh, 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 my days, maybe 10 years, I'd not seen him. And here he is, he's in Ghana. We're there, we're talking, we're laughing. I begin to share the gospel with him. I'm a pastor now, and etc. and so forth. And of all the places I meet him, I go to another nation and I meet him. I want to tonight, amen, as this ever happened to you. You're walking and you find money on the floor. I'm not talking about a pound. Bless God if you get a pound. Not like five pound, maybe a 10 pound. You pick it up, you don't get it. Hallelujah, from 10 pounds, you know. You know, hey, or maybe you're driving and you come to a mall, you come to a shopping area, and you, as you come in, there is a, there is a, a, a driver is leaving a parking space just at the entrance of entering the mall. I mean, you, you, you come in and you go, wow, wow, what? I'm, I'm exactly in the right place. I mean, at the right time. Or maybe you come up, happen to show up at a time where an accident has happened and you're able to step in and be a blessing. I mean, and you can say in the rescue efforts. Tonight, I will call those times little wins. Little wins where you happen to be the right place at the right time. But tonight, church, there are such a things as big wins, where we win in a big way. We shared the account, amen, of Shaka Zulu, 
who is running away from his, uh, 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 his, 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 his uh, I think it's his uncle at that time. He's running away and he's, as he's running for his life, people are chasing him, they want to kill him. And, and, and uh, as he's trying to just dive and move away and hide from these people, he comes across a man who has been hurt, a man who has been injured. And, you know, he, he wants to go away, but he decides, let me help this guy. He gets him, nurses him well, and he runs off the park company. Chakazulu is caught, he's, he's apprehended by his uncle's uh, warriors, and as they're taking Shakazulu back, uh, I mean, to KwaZulu Natala, uh, the, 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 to, to stand before his uncle, they have to go through a village, and, and the, the, the warriors of that village take these men, and they bring these men, and including Shakazulu to the king, because if they're going to go for this village, they need uh, the, 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 the permission of the king to pass for the village, and as they bring Shakazulu and these men who have Shakazulu to the king, they look up, the king happens to be the man that Shaka Zulu had rescued earlier before. That's a big win. I was reading about a guy who uh, he's, uh, 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 he, he, he's, he's on his way to a job interview. He's all suited and booted. He's, he's good to go. He's going through in his mind all the stuff that he has. He wants to say, if they ask him this question, I'm going to say this. If they say this, what I, I've read, I know that. And he's standing there, he's waiting in the bus stop. And as he's waiting by the bus stop, he sees an older man. This older man is struggling to, to get the, uh, change the tire of his car. And he's trying to change it. He can see he's struggling. The guy's kind of standing there. He's looking at the watch. He's looking at this man struggling in his car. Finally, his boss comes and he wants to enter, but he's looking at this man, he's obviously struggling. And he's oh, you know, oh, oh. And, he, and he goes, he helps the guy, puts the tie in, screws in the nuts, and finally quickly rushes, jumps on another bus. He gets to his interview. He's later, the secretary brings him uh, to, the, the, to the office of where he's going to be interviewed. There's a desk, a man is sitting there. The man turns around and it happens to be the man he helped put the tie back together again. Do you think he got the job? Heck yeah. That's a big win right there. What am I saying to you tonight, church? The right place, the right time, and the right response can make all the difference in the world. It really can. So let's look at the importance of being in the right place at the right time. Because the Bible is full of big wins. And our text is one of them. Whether it is Ruth being told by a mother-in-law, Naomi, who is here tonight, to go and glean in a field. And of all the fields in Bethlehem, Judah, she happens to go to the field belonging to Boaz. Boaz is going to be a man, the king's man redeemer. Boaz is the only one who could redeem and give back the land. You can say back uh, uh, to Naomi. And of all the of all the fields she, she happened, of all the fields she could have gone to, she happens to choose that field who belongs to the one person in all of Israel that could help her. Whether tonight, amen, it is Nehemiah working for King Artaxerxes, the only one who has the power, amen, to okay the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. I can go on and on tonight, amen. What are the chances of that? I want to tell you tonight, amen, those are people who are in the right place, you can say, at the right time. And those are people who are able to step into, you can say, big wins tonight. And in our text, we see another one. We have an Ethiopian eunuch. We have Philip, but it's also somebody else tonight, and that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the main player in all of this. The Holy Spirit is the main character in all of this. And I simply want to say to the people of God tonight, church, that it is important to be in the right place at the right time. And I want us to see how the Holy Spirit will direct us to specific places tonight, and he does this to do three things. He does this, number one, to bring illumination, number two, amen, to bring provision, and number three, to bring mission. When the Holy Spirit is involved, he is directing us to bring illumination, he's directing us to bring provision, but also he's directing us so you and I could be involved in a powerful mission. So let's consider, first of all, illumination. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. We saw this, I believe, last week. The Bible says the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the, uh, the word of, sorry, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise, go down to the potter's house and there, there, I'm going to say it again, there I will cause you to hear my words. 
Think about this. Here is this prophet. God speaks to him. And God says, Jeremiah, I want you to do something for me. Sure, what do you want, Lord? I want you to go to the potter's house. And there, you're going to hear my words. Now, I want you to imagine the night. Jeremiah could have said, God, but I'm hearing from you now. But God, God, I, I, I just heard what you said. So if I'm hearing from you now, if I've been hearing from you for a long time now, if I'm hearing from you now and I've just heard what you said, right, why do I need to go over there? Why, 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 why? Every, I, the reception is very good. I'd have to move to, you know, I, I can hear very clearly what you said. Why do I have to go over there? Today, maybe we would say, I've got Zoom. I've got a buffet of YouTube. Why do I have to go over there? Why do I have to show up over there? Church, it is important there. Because over there, God will bring illumination. The Bible tells us Jeremiah goes. You can say he obeys tonight. Amen. He goes and he sees, amen, at the workings of the potter. He goes tonight and he sees the future of the people of God. And it is so important tonight that this man be in a specific place to receive the illumination that God had for him. I remember while... I was uh, uh, in Archway pastoring. I remember I remember two specific times I came down to the church at Tottenham. I remember two specific times, uh, amen, that, you know what, uh, I, I wasn't planning on coming. It was done in my schedule, but I decided, let me just show up. There was one time, uh, uh, some of you remember Pastor Kerry Meher. He was preaching revival. This was at uh, 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 Tottenham Green Ledger Center. And I remember coming down, um, and I just sat at the back, uh, heard from God, uh, you know, great preaching. And, uh, you know, the service is about to over. And all of a sudden, he says, you there, brother. And he calls me out, gives me a word. It was spot on exactly what I needed to hear at that time. Listen, there's times I've showed up, amen, in different churches. And I've sat down on the word of God. And God has preached to me. God has ministered to me. Answers to questions. Things I was struggling with. Listen, church, sometimes it could be just a sentence. And it made every difference in the world. You can say, why? Well, I could just stay here. I could not listen tonight. God says, there, you were here. My word. Tonight, God wants to bring us illumination. But sometimes illumination is tied to a specific place. It is tied to a place. And God says, if you will go there, you will hear my word. You will hear life-changing words. You will get answers to questions. You will receive an anchor for your soul. But it's not going to happen here. It's going to happen there. The second thing is provision. This is important tonight. Genesis chapter 22. We find an account where God, we are told through the scriptures, tests Abraham. And in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to verse 4, I'm going to read tonight. I'm going to jump around a bit. Like I said, we're going to be a bit of reading. The Bible says, now it came to pass... After these things, the God tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the, in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place. Everyone say the place. The place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw the place. Everyone say the place. He saw the place afar off. Now, let's jump to verse 9. And we're going to read from verse 9 uh, to verse uh, 14. The Bible says, then uh, uh, they came to the place. I hope this begins to be able to see this. They came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your hands on the 
lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Verse 14, and Abraham called the name of the place. The Lord will provide as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Now, if you've read this account before, you will know it is a very powerful picture of the type of Christ. What do I mean tonight, church? You and I, think about this, you and I were laid at the altar. The knife was going to come down and that knife was going to separate us, amen, and throw us into an eternity away from God. And I thank God tonight, amen, a ram was at the thickets. A ram was found. You can say um, this ram tonight became our substitute. Uh, this lamb, uh, lamb, ram was Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God, uh, where he laid down his life on the altar of the cross uh, and he died so you and I can go free tonight. Paul says uh, in Romans that he who did not spare his own son, uh, but delivered him up for us all. Tonight, amen, the reason we have heaven, the reason we are free, the reason our sins can be forgiven, because somebody took our place tonight. Somebody, amen, died in our place. Somebody took the blows. Somebody took, amen, that's fair on the side. Somebody took the crown of thorns on his head so you and I could be right with our God. And I pray tonight, and I'm sure we all understand this, we all get this, but in a personal level, what this whole account teaches us, it teaches us that God's provision for our life is tied to a specific place. Church, God had sent Abraham to a specific mountain. He goes to a place that mountains everywhere. But God tells him, I believe in verse 3, I'm going to take you to a mountain that I show you. I'm going to lead you to the one that is important that you are there. He, he, he sends him to a specific mountain tonight. And I'll say it again tonight. God's provision for our lives tonight is tied to a specific place. Now think about this tonight, church. God sent Abraham to a specific place. But also tonight, God has sent that ram to a specific place. What if Abraham had gone to the wrong mountain? Think about that tonight. What if Abraham had got tired on the way? Because if you read the text, the Bible tells us after three days, Abraham lifted his eyes and the place that he knew that God was leading him was still afar off. Think about it. After three days' journey in the hot, blazing desert, after three days, who knows of scorpions and snakes and an uncomfortable night, he comes, he lifts up his eyes, and the place is too far away. There is still a distance to where he needs to go. What if Abraham had simply said, listen, I'm tired. I'm fed up. Where am I? Where am I right, where am I right now? It looks good. Chop. Let's just do this here. Let's just do what God wants us to do right here. What if I'm fed up? You know what? I'm not going any further. I'm tired. If Abraham had done that tonight, the results would have been, there would have been no provision tonight. What he needed from God, he would not have got it because he was done in the place that God wanted him to be. Just let me say it again. There is a specific place God wants us to be. God sent that provision to a specific place and he ordained Abraham, amen, and the provision to meet. I think about this tonight, amen. While Abraham tonight is coming up the mountain with his problem, God has a provision on the other side of the mountain coming up as a solution to his problem. So many times, church, God simply wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. And if we keep on walking tonight, amen, and we keep on trusting God, and we keep on going forward tonight, we are going to see tonight that there is a divine meeting between your problem, amen, and the provision that God has. And if you keep on going tonight, that will meet, and what a glorious time that will be. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1 to 4, it speaks about Elisha, Elijah, sorry. The Bible says, Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be not be due nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get out from here, turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it, and it will be 
that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. That right there, that Elijah, that's right there. I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. Let me say something tonight, church. Those ravens would not have fed him anyway. God has a there for every single one of us. Every single one of us in this building, God has a there for you. If Elijah had gone to another brook, he would have missed the blessing. Because I want you to go to the brook Cherith. Because over there, that's what I'm going to look after you. Over there, I'm going to meet your need. Over there, I'm going to take care. I'm going to provide. Oh, but Elijah, it has to be over there. I don't think he's here tonight, but if you would hear uh, Sam's testimony, Sam was not meant to be here. Sam should have been somewhere else. But Sam ends up here. And because if he ends up here, God begins to bless him. God begins to move for him. God begins to speak to him. God begins, begins to provide for him. Here's the sad thing tonight. We all know somebody who has gone to another brook. And maybe tonight the enemy is whispering in your ears that this brook has dried up. The Bible says there, God commanded the ravens. In fact, the next verse, if you carry on reading, it blows my mind. The Bible says Elijah leaves that place because God commands him, I want you to go to Zarephath because there's a widow there who I have commanded Elijah to look after you. Church, when, we, when you and I are in the right place, God commands provision to come. Listen to me tonight. When you are in the right place, God will command a business to give you employment. When you're in the right place, God will command favor over your life. And let me say about my God this, this evening. He will do it through ravens, and he will do it even for a widow if he has to. When you're in the right place. He will do this. Now, doesn't, that doesn't mean tonight that you and I will not have time to trials. It doesn't mean tonight that you and I are not going to go through some tough and rough times here and there. But I believe tonight that when you and I are in our their place, that we can expect the provision of God for our lives. Just before Pastor Harry went to Jamaica, I was speaking to him the day before at evening. We, we, at night, we were talking about some things. And he shared with me a testimony about how he got the place where him, him and uh, 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 Lorna are going to be staying. And one of the one, one of the pastors, uh, many of you may know Pastor Kamal. Kamal, Kamal had, had had found somewhere online, and he was speaking to a lady, uh, 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 and he said, "Listen, we we uh, she, she, conversation began to how why are you uh, what's happening where, where are you in this place for we're sending a missionary to Jamaica and this lady's Jamaican." I said, praise God, you know, I want to be praying for my nation, pray for Jamaica, that God will do something powerful, God will send the man of God, God will do something, you know, etc. And she's asked all the details, of this. what part of church are you from? He told her about the church, but well, do you guys have a website and like that? He gave her the details, and the Karen talking, all right, when well, you call me back next week, we'll sort this out. So when he calls her back, she began to tell, well, I went on your website, and I, when I went on his website, I, I began to, I, there was one sermon, I clicked on one sermon. There's so many sermons there, but I clicked on one sermon, and I heard this pastor preaching, powerful man of God, powerful man of God, et cetera. He goes, oh, come out, it's going, yeah, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. And, he, and, and they, they carried on getting the, all the details of the housing, ready, et cetera, and so forth. And, and he asked her, who did you hear preach, by the way? She goes, oh, some pastor, uh, him named uh, Linford Henry. She goes, what's the name of the pastor coming over? He goes, Linford Henry. Kidding not, kidding not. He's, he heard the phone drop, and he could, all he could hear was, Shut down, man, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. she's busting out in tongues. All of a sudden, he gets back on the phone, discount. This. You don't have to pay this. Take this out and say, literally, they give that place for next to nothing. Coincidence? You think that's the chance? Listen. 
if you go on the Wolfenstone Potter's House uh, YouTube site, do you know how many summons on there? Out of all the people that click on and to hear, I think he's only got two summons on there, Limpers. Of all the people, and she says, I only heard one. I only heard one. She says, I only heard one. She's talking, uh, let me hear him. And it's Harry. Of all the people, church, we serve a supernatural God tonight. And I really believe tonight, listen to me, amen. When, when you are in the place that God wants you to be, you can expect his provision. Here my man, I, I remember that, that, that day when I, 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 it was such a soup, I just can't explain. Here my walking on West Green Road, I'm walking, I'm walking, and I, I can't explain. I'm, I'm walking, and all of a sudden, I just, I just, it's just this inkling, just to go, just go that, that way. Just turn around. So I just turned around, went back. I went back, I bumped into a young man. And it was the first one I spoke to that day. He came to church on Wednesday, got saved. The first one. Do you know what my day was? My day was simply this. That's what it was. That's what it was. Just, I'm going this way, and all of a sudden just, and I went back. And I meet this young man. And I said, listen, there was no debate. There was no fighting. It was just so smooth. It was so simple. Gave me his number. I didn't even ask him. Gave me his number. Call, and every time we talk, there's no he didn't, You know, sometimes you try and talk to people and they're ducking you. He's, he's not hiding. He don't, he's just being honest. It came and got saved. See, there for me was simply turning and walking back. Pastor, uh, I can't remember his name now in Australia, made a very powerful statement. It'll come to me later on, uh, the name of the pastor, Tom Payne. He says these words, and, I, and it's, it's convicted me because it's so true. He says, I stopped going outreach, now I go soul winning. When you see outreach as soul winning, it changes everything. So how does the Holy Spirit guide us? How, how do we know tonight when he's leading us to a their place? Because tonight, if we all had visions, it would be very easy. Well, I had a vision today, right? <laughs> if, if, he, if he spoke to us in a very clear way, it would be very, very simple tonight. But let's be real tonight. For most of us, for the majority of us tonight, his guidance is subtle. It is so subtle. Elijah is in a cave. And while he's in the cave, he comes out of the cave. And you know the account. The Bible says us, a great wind came by, but the Lord was not on the wind. Then a great earthquake, but the Lord was not on the earthquake. Then fire, but the Lord was on the fire. Then the Bible says this, then a still small voice. Tonight, many times when God speaks to us, it's subtle. When God moves upon us, it's subtle. It's, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's a small, it's a still, it, it, it's, it's a small impression. It is a small whisper. It is, it, it is, listen tonight, one thing I've learned tonight, it's important you and I, we learn to be still. Psalms 46, 10, 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Too many times God's people are running around like headless chickens. And God is trying to say, stop. Listen, I'm trying to help you. Will you stop? And all of a sudden we stop. And we give him our time and we pause. All of a sudden everything becomes clear. Because we're still. We've put aside the distractions. We put aside the things beckoning for our attention tonight. It's when we still tonight, I believe we know. I also believe tonight that God can lead us through desire. Psalms 37 verse 4 says this, delight yourself in the Lord, or delight yourself also in the Lord. So there's things you can delight yourself in, but it's also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, many people don't understand that scripture. Let me say this tonight. That scripture doesn't mean tonight you're going to be happy and God will give you whatever you want. That's not what it means tonight. That word delight means pliable. It is the picture of a clay running smoothly in the hands 
of the potter. It means tonight we come to a place we say, Lord, I am yours. It means tonight we come to a place we say, Lord, I am willing. It means tonight we come to a place we say, Lord, I'm listening. It means tonight we come to a place, Lord, I, I, I want to do whatever you want me to do. God, I surrender to you. I give myself to you. No debating, no fighting. Lord, I, I, that's it. What, I, you, you tell me to jump. I'm going to ask you how high. And when we do that tonight... When we, when we are open and we are willing tonight, when we, when we assume that posture, God begins to insert desires in our hearts. They are his desires tonight. And I believe tonight he begins to guide us to those desires. Lastly, there's mission, and I want to close with this. In Acts chapter 15, verse 22. The Bible says, then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their uh, own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who is also named as Barsabas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren. Now, what's happening here is there's some questions regarding the Gentiles that, 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 that come up and this, this, this church in Antioch decided to send certain men, you could say to the mother church in Jerusalem, to get some clarity regarding how they're supposed to deal with Gentiles. Remember the early Christians were Jewish. Now Gentiles are getting saved and they're thinking, okay, how do we handle this? Let's go to the mother church. That's good doct doctrine right there. So they are, they are going to the mother church with, this, uh, 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 with these men. Uh, and, 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 and verse 25, uh, basically, uh, is part of the reply, uh, or, 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 or sorry, it's part of the letter that they wrote to the church at Antioch. It says this in verse 25, Acts 15, 25. It says, it seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. So they this is part of the reply. And they, 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 I want you to see this picture. Now I'm going to jump to verse 33 and verse 34 of Acts he says this, and after they had stayed there for a, while, for a time, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. Now, so listen to verse 34. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. So they've answered the questions, extra, extra, so forth. They've done it. Now they're going to go back. But the Bible says it seemed good to Silas to remain there. It's a sense of, you know what, they get it, it's like, this feels right. You know what, guys, if you're going to go, go, I'm going to stay here. Guys, you want to walk away, walk away, fine, but I'm going to stay here. And let me say something, it means nothing more than that. We're not going to try and super, super spiritual this. You know what, I'm just going to stay here. And he just stays. Now listen to verse 36 to verse 40. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with him John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take him, uh, take, uh, 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 that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Palaphonia, and he had gone, and he had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention between, sorry, the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. Listen carefully. A great contention takes place between Paul and Barnabas. And this contention was over one person. His name is John Mark. It was so sharp. The Bible says these two split. Paul and Barnabas are the dynamic duo of the Bible. Paul and Barnabas are, 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 are the two, you could say, most powerful men of God in the word of God. And the Bible says because John Mark had let them down on, 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 on an earlier mission that they had, Paul says, I can't trust this guy. This guy is no good. You know, we don't need him. And, and Barnabas is trying to, no, 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 no. He needs to come. He needs to come. He needs to come. And the contention was so sharp. They, 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 had, they, 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 they split it. And the Bible tells us, if you read the word of God, you never hear from Barnabas again. 
Barnabas forever disappears from scripture. In fact, if you, if you read, you find out, you couldn't see John Mark. John Mark gets redeemed. Barnabas is gone. Barnabas no longer shows up, amen, in the word of God. Tonight, amen, we've all seen powerful people in God fade away. Gone. For whatever reason tonight. Now we see Paul chooses Silas. He chooses Silas. He normally would have been with Barnabas. He chooses Silas, and he makes, or you can say they, because it's not just him, they made history. Now, here's the question tonight. How did the Holy Spirit prepare a new companion for Paul? How did the Holy Spirit, how, how, did, he, how did he guide in all of this? Are you ready for this, church? It seemed good. It seemed good. You know what? I'll just, you know what? I'll just wait for a while. You want guys want to go, 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 go. I, I just, it seemed good. Could it be the Holy Spirit was guiding Silas through an impulse as subtle and as simple as, hey, Silas, you're coming. No, 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 no. I'm going to stay here. It seems good. That simple. That subtle. Not, not, not. Silas, stay. Because you are going to be Paul's companion. Oh, I had a dream. God told me. No, no, no. You know what? Now you guys go. I'm going to stay here. Why? Seems good. Simple, subtle, no heavy revy. You see, what happened to Paul and Barnabas didn't take the Holy Spirit by surprise. And I don't believe it was the will of God for these guys to split tonight. But he knew it was coming. So what he did, he made provision in this decision that Silas tonight uh, was going to stay and connect with Paul and end up impacting the world. Uh, and this decision was going to be the most important decision Silas was ever going to make in his life. Uh, a bar uh, his salvation tonight. Uh, and how did he make this decision? It seemed good. Guys, this just, this just feels right. I'm staying here. You know, sometimes... If we're honest tonight, we can be in the danger of over-spiritualizing everything. Every, we, 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 can, we, 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 we over-spiritualize things we ought not to. And I believe tonight as we learn to be acquainted with the Spirit of God and how the Holy Spirit works tonight, I believe tonight it helps us to become naturally supernatural, su supernatural and supernaturally natural. That as we get committed, as we begin to know how the Spirit of God moves tonight, amen, we begin to walk, amen, in a very simple but yet very powerful way. Let me close by saying this tonight. Next time you have a sense, however subtle it might be, it could be a slight prompt, it could be just a, a whisper tonight. I want to challenge you to take a moment to commune with your heart and ask yourself tonight, is the Holy Spirit speaking to me? Is the Holy Spirit directing me? Is the Holy Spirit leading me? I remember tonight, sometimes God just puts something in your heart. Let me just call this person this time. And you call them, this is exactly the right time. They need to make, hear something. Or you, you go to a certain place, like I said, and you just end up meeting somebody or something happens. And you, 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 sometimes we don't put one and one together and get two. I mean, we're just thinking nothing, nothing. But tonight, God has set things up. You're speaking to people, and all of a sudden, you know what, you, you begin to pray, oh God, give me the words to speak, and God gives the words to speak, and it's exactly what they need to hear. You need to ask yourself, could the Holy Spirit be talking to me? Because I believe tonight, church, as you and I grow closer in our relationship with the Holy Spirit tonight, we can begin to discern those times where he's directing us to a place of illumination. Or he's directing us to a place of provision where our needs are going to be met. Or he's directing us to a place of mission where we can make impact for the world and for the glory of God. Tonight, I really believe tonight, more now than ever, it is important and God wants us to be in the right place at the right time. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Amen.
every head bowed, every eyes closed, and this place in respect to God, those next to them, Christians are quietly praying. Tonight, none of us are here by accident. Tonight, when we give our lives to Christ, it was not by accident. When you walked into this building or, you know, the, last night I was talking with Idris and Jody Ann and we're talking about the passion of Christ outreach. Some of you got saved then. That was not by accident. You simply came to the right place at the right time. And here you are today serving God years down the road. And God has done a 180 on your life. Who knows where we would be tonight if not for the grace of God. And I believe tonight there's more. More now than ever God wants to do. He wants to, he wants to be able to position us at places tonight. Because time is short. And it's so important in men that we grow in our relationship with God. And as we grow in our relationship with God, we become more sensitive to the spirit of God. And he begins to lead us. And supernatural things happen. Maybe you're in this building tonight, you're not right with God. Maybe you're in this building tonight, maybe you just walked in and, and, and you know, you probably wonder what's going on here, friend. You're here because you're in the right place at the right time. You're here tonight because over here tonight is where God wants you to be. Over here tonight is where you will hear from God. Over here tonight is where God will provide. Over here tonight is where God will bring you to be some part of something that is going to touch and is still touching the world. But you need to repent of your sins, put your faith in Jesus Christ and be saved. Very quickly, on the sound of my voice, if Pastor Yusuf, I'm not saved, I haven't given my life to God, I'm away from God, and tonight I want to give my life to Christ. I don't even know why I'm here, but I know I need Jesus. I don't understand it all, but I know I need forgiveness of sins. Tonight, if the Spirit of God is dealing with you, God is dealing with you right now, and you want to get your heart right with him. If that's you, why don't you do one thing? Why don't you lift your hand up tonight? I want to pray with you tonight very quickly. Slip your hand up and put it down tonight. We'll count it a privilege to lead you in a simple prayer to receive the Lord Jesus quickly, up and down. I remember now you backslid your way from God. You took matters into your own hands, which is it's ripped you away from the will of God. You've gone down the wrong road, down the wrong path. You're, 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 you've, been, you've, been, you've, you've fallen your own agenda by, by, by the grace of God. You're back in this building and you're wondering, why am I here? You're here tonight because God wants you in the right place at the right time. And tonight, there's no better time to get our hearts right with God and come back to him if we've moved away from him. And maybe that's you, you've backslid and you want to recommit your life. If that's you, lift your hand up tonight, put it down. I want to pray with you tonight, quickly. Amen. Praise God. And I want to speak to God's people tonight.